Next to the Middle East and the Israel-Gaza war, Israel has repeatedly said that the brutality against the victims of the Hamas attacks on October the 7th included sexual violence. Now, a team of experts from the United Nations has concluded there are reasonable grounds to believe that sexual violence occurred during the attacks and there's convincing information that hostages taken by the group have been subjected to it. Hamas has denied the allegations. Pramila Patton is the UN Special Representative on Sexual Violence in Conflict. We regard to the hostages taken to Gaza, we found clear and convincing information that sexual violence, including rape, sexualized torture, cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment, has been committed against captives. And we also have reasonable grounds to believe that such violence may still be ongoing against those still held in captivity. I pause and must add that I am of the strong opinion that this finding does not in any way legitimize further violence, but actually reinforces the need for an urgent ceasefire. Meanwhile, the head of the main UN agency in Gaza has complained it faces a deliberate and concerted campaign to end its operations. Philippe Lazzarini told the UN General Assembly in New York that donors have been flooded with misinformation about UNRWA. He says Israel has also failed to provide further information about allegations made in January that 12 of its staff took part in the October the 7th attacks. UNRWA is facing a deliberate and concerted campaign to undermine its operations and ultimately end them. Operations that are mandated by this assembly. Part of this campaign involves inundating donors with misinformation designed to foster distrust and tarnish the reputation of the agency. Dismantling UNRWA is short-sighted. By doing so, we will sacrifice an entire generation of children, sowing the seeds of hatred, resentment, and future conflict. The notion that the agency can be dismantled without violating a host of human rights and jeopardizing international peace and security is naive at best. This is all happening as the White House says President, Vice President Kamala Harris has expressed deep concern over the humanitarian situation in Gaza during talks with the Israeli War Cabinet member Benny Gantz. This image has been released from the meeting. The Vice President's office says she urged Israel to let more aid into Gaza while calling on Hamas to accept the terms of a ceasefire. Mr Gantz will later meet with the US's top diplomat, Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Despite criticisms of the trip by some of the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government, well, earlier I spoke to our Middle East correspondent Yolan Nell about the increasing pressure the US was putting on Israel about the humanitarian situation in Gaza. We've had some of the sharpest criticism of Israel by its closest ally, the U.S., in recent days. A lot of it coming uh, from the vice president, from uh, Kamala Harris herself. Um, she has said in this meeting with Benny Gantz uh, that there is uh, a need for a credible humanitarian plan for Gaza. She's previously talked about there being a humanitarian catastrophe there and talked about how people are starving. Uh, that is in line with the reports that we're hearing uh, from the U.N. The World Health Organization say that it found... Uh, many examples of children who had been malnourished and were starving, uh, some of whom had, had died in a hospital uh, in northern Gaza when it got staff there on an aid mission. Uh, we also had uh, from Kamala Harris um, really calls for Israel to do more in terms of opening up uh, crossings, uh, particularly ground crossings, what uh, Washington wants opened up to allow more aid into Gaza because as we've seen in recent days um, with increased concern about what's happening there, uh, the US and other countries have been increasingly dropping aid uh, into the Gaza Strip. Um, that is seen as not a very effective way of, of getting aid to those who need it, but it, it's just um, really seen as a measure of frustration at uh, the controls that Israel places, the security checks it demands on aid that's going in, and the very slow pace of aid delivery. Israel says that it does not put any limits on humanitarian aid going into Gaza. And all the time, the actual situation inside Gaza, particularly in the north, as you mentioned, the WHO saying is really quite dire. 
That's right. I mean, mass starvation is the warning that comes uh, from the UN. And we have had hospitals reporting that children are now dying of malnutrition. There are a lot of fears um, that malnutrition and the spread of disease with the very difficult situation that people are now living in. It's not just shortage of food, but also shortage of medicines, shortage of fuel uh, to run vital equipment in the hospitals. These are all growing problems. And of course, that is a part of the pressure for uh, at least a six week truce. That's what's currently uh, on the table in these uh, Cairo talks um, that would allow a big surge in the amount of aid going into Gaza as well as give an opportunity um, to get uh, the hostages uh, some of the remaining Israeli hostages held by Hamas in Gaza uh, back home um, so really Washington and other players pushing for that it's the third day of talks now the US does have a delegation in Cairo along um, with with Hamas, uh, with Egyptian and Qatari mediators there. Um, but Israel hasn't sent a delegation. Sources here saying that's because uh, they want to have a list of the surviving hostages that would be included in the deal from Hamas in advance. Um, Hamas has been saying that it's not possible to collect that uh, data while Israeli bombing continues in Gaza. But we understand from sources in Egypt that still uh, Israel is getting updates on developments there. Washington has said it's still hopeful of some kind uh, of a deal being agreed before the Islamic holy month of Ramadan starts next week. Uh, there is a chance of that because it says that Israel has already agreed to the framework of what's being discussed at the moment that was agreed in Paris in talks more than a week ago.